And as I mentioned, with us for 19 years, just a, a year after Eugene and Julia, maybe even less than a year when they joined us. Uh, and Robbie, you built your business in a lot of different ways. Obviously, uh, today with social media, you've done meet and greets over the years, but I think. You know, the thing that you're probably most known, because even known for, is even back in the days of when AM300 was our key product, was going out and doing these shows. And in your case, the really big shows, women's shows, bridal shows, with thousands and thousands of people. And I know you do others as well. You've gone on to mentor Lisa and her group to do the same. And if you would, talk a little bit about going out and doing these shows and the best way to, to go about it. Okay, I'm going to be in trouble because I'm really hoarse. I'm looking at Tara. Oh, I should went to bed. Okay, so when I started, I didn't have any money either. I had three children when I started. And so what I did, I got four or five women in the beginning. My mom and my sister traveled, and we went on a circuit doing the Southern Women shows. So this way, I didn't have a thousand dollars. But we each had $200. And I get, Eugene helped me too. Eugene's always helped me, like with AMS in the beginning. He would give me a product, you know. It's like they say, if you want your upline to pay attention to you, then you've got to be working. You can't just be sitting and, sat and wishing. But we, we enjoy doing these shows. We make it fun. Me and Lisa go to the and they have new cars on display, and we make our pictures in front of the ones we wanted that we could never afford back then. And last year, we all bought new cars. Um, I can remember doing them for 15 years and never having any money to shop. It was so depressing. It was like, they have all this cool stuff, but we never had any money. And the last two years, I'm just like spending queen in the yard. Every vendor knows me, they know what I do. It amazes them. They're like, that's the woman with that MLM stuff. It really works. You know, they watch me stay with it. And that's something really important about our company. You don't find MLM companies, network marketing, that people have been there 15, 20 years. You just, you don't find that. Uh, I got, I'm going to get off just a little bit because I want to say that in eight, 19 years, I have never missed a paycheck. I mean, you also don't find companies that pay you weekly. Every single week, I know my money's in the bank, and that's so important. You don't want to go build a business with some ground floor deal. When I go, oh, you're in on the ground floor. Well, what that means is they'll probably be gone in a few years, and then your credibility is shot. So it's really important that when we're standing there, you know, talking to these people that we feel like we have a strong company behind us. And, you know, we could always say, hey, you can call our company and you can speak to the president. And that was amazing to people. And we didn't just do it as a retail show, like in the women area in the back of the booth, where we actually sit down and sign people up. And Lisa, when she first came, I should let you tell this since I can barely talk. Tell them how made you be able to speak to people. <laughs> um, my very first event was the Southern Women Show in Nashville, and I um, scraped my last bottom dollars to fly down and, and work it with Rhonda. And I was scared out of my mind because we walked into this giant convention center with thousands of vendors. There was probably 2,000 vendors at that one. And I thought, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? I don't do things like this. And I was very, very scared. And I hid in the back of our booth, like behind a banner, and I was kind of pretending to work. And I was putting my labels on my brochures, and I'm not looking up at anybody. And Mom just sat there and watched me do it. She let me do it for about an hour. And she's like, all right, Lisa, so you've got to get up. And she pushed me to the front, and Judy Baggett, she took me by the, by the arm and taught me how to talk and um, what to say and how to answer the questions. And, um, you know, that was uh, an amazing learning experience, and I took that experience and turned it around, and now I'm doing the same thing that Rhonda did for me, I'm doing it for my team members. So we go out and do the huge expos and um, all kinds of shows, but I like to take new people in my team that have ambition and want to work, and they come and learn from me, just as I learned from Rhonda and her group 
us but from that time. And but when you're starting out, it's really important that you do do the business in every way. You carry your clothes around in the same. Well, I'm, you know, old people like me, when you're over 50, they're like, I'm not getting on that internet. Well, then you're going to get left in the dust. We wouldn't have that you know, if we hadn't got on the internet. And, you, I mean, I love social media because I've worked hard all these years pounding that pavement. Sure, it's easy to sit in there at that computer and just sell, 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 you know. So do everything. And after you get people in off the computer, then you've got to have a relationship with them for them to stay with us. Um, start out, we used to call it the Chamber of Commerce. Call all your schools. They have festivals. They're very inexpensive. $25 or a donation. Now you can Google wherever you want to do an event. Just Google the city. I like to go to the beach. So I'll Google Panama City and find a festival. You want to make it fun when we do a women's show in Jacksonville? We're going to stay on the beach. So after we stand on our feet 10 hours, we go get in the hot tub on the beach, have a glass of wine, and make memories. And that's why we're so close to each other, because that's how we, that's how we roll the song. Um, OK, Gary sees me with the pad, so he's about to have a nervous breakdown. He's like, Ron, I ain't giving that microphone pad. Back up, Gary. Um, don't base your success on your upline or your downline. You know, it's wonderful to have an upline, but Eugene didn't hold my hands. He, I call him if I needed something. He, I'm asking to loan me money to get this or that to get in the show. He never held my hands. He, he let me go. And that's that's what you gotta do. If you just go, you think outside the box and you go do it. Nobody is responsible for your failure or your success. Nobody can control that. Um, we do have the best products. Um, I want to give a shout out since there's a special man here today. And that is my mentor, Gary's father, John Hale, who taught me how to dream, taught me how to live like a rock star, spoiled me rotten, and changed my life forever. Shout out to him. He was 80 years old on his first day, he was good climbing. I mean, I didn't have done that yet. And then now, you know, it's years later, and we've come around, and we have the Mendra and the Fabulous Tara. And I'm just so impressed by how fast the Mendra gets things done. And he listens, and it's like, you did it? I got it, you know? <laughs> His work to me is, Debbie Perkins said to him that day, my idea, about 10 seconds past, he said, done. And, you know, he doesn't cut corners. He gets the best ingredients made in the best lab. We pay out 51%. Most multi-level pays 30, you know, uh, much less than us. And I've made more money last year than I thought I would make in my entire life. I mean, I'm just a high school educated, working from home mom. And that's what draws people to us because they relate to us. They're like, well, I know, right? she can do this, I can do this. That's what I thought about Eugene and Julia when I first met him. Eugene come in and said, well, how y'all doing? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I sound like I'm from New York. If that tells me what I can do. So they relate to us as one of my brothers. Oh, there he is. Our pay plan and with ACE, people were.
are just making thousands of dollars a week. So when you get a little bump in the road, we had bumps in the road. We lost a Fedra. So what? I knew they were smart enough to find something else. And that's what I knew with Demendra. Demendra will have us the best products coming out on the market, hands down. He's always, I mean, the energy drink, he studies, he watches. So be confident in our products. Be confident in our company. We're debt free. We don't owe anybody money. This is a family business that he is grooming his children to grow up and take. I know they were telling me their oldest son, X13, he sits and does figures with Demandra, percentages on the differences and the markups, and I'm like, wow. So, you know, he's not going anywhere. He's here for the long haul, and we all need to get committed. Quit making excuses about why our checks are down. Guess what? If they're down, then go out, recruit five people on 435. You just got a thousand dollars. If you go, well, you might can do that, but I can't. Well, why? Why? I'm no smarter than you. Uh, I just, I get determined. I got bills to pay. I got five kids, eight grandkids. I take care of my elderly parents. If you have to pay your bills, and get determined to make it happen. individually, you know, with people on determining their goals, whether it be short-term, small goals, and then going for the big girl goals, as she calls them. And uh, so I just want to welcome uh, Angela and Mark Maddox to talk a little bit about goals and whatever else is on their mind today. started that's what I preached constantly I wanted everybody to just you had to set a goal because I know for me I had a goal when I started and that was to retire Mark then it was I, that was like my big girl goal was to retire Mark what I had to do to get there was I had to replace his income times two and I had to be consistent well I did that eight months later after starting he got to come home which was fabulous Eugene and Julia met with us and um, kind of laid the pavement for us and kind of talked about goals with me that night, told me what their goals were and for us, what they wanted to see for us, which was to spend time together. Leon and Sue was talking about how the relationship and spending time together and Pam, that's so true. All of these things though will never happen if you don't have goals. How many times do we get started doing something and we forget? We forget what we're even doing it for, especially during the down times. If you don't have a goal, you don't know where you're going, you don't know what you're going to do to get there. I recommend everybody have a 30-day goal, come up with five things that you're going to do repeatedly for, for those 30 days to hit that goal. And if you don't hit it, don't get discouraged. You've got 30 more days the next month to try it again. You just keep doing this until you achieve what you're, what you're set out for. Um, Firm believer in post it up and make it happen. I know Mandy Mitchell was trying to hit platinum. I told her, I said, okay. Well, the biggest one for me was when you sent me a picture of your platinum nails and you said, here it is, I posted it up. I'm going to tell you. And so I think the next month you hit platinum. So make your goal, come up with your five things, put it in your face. Rachel Brown, she had post it notes all over her car at one time. Put them on your bathroom mirror, everywhere. Put it in your face. Tell somebody about it. You can't have secret goals. Well, you can have secret goals, I guess. But you need to have goals that you tell people about. If you tell somebody about them, they're going to hold you accountable. You're not going to want to let those people down. So set a goal, five things. 
Tell people about it. Put it in your face. That's all it takes. What do you want to say? <laughs>